good eye. <laughs> yeah, high school football mighty big in the state of Texas. Speaking of mighty big, this inning's mighty big for C.J. Wilson, the influence of Cliff Lee. Not many guys would come out to the eighth inning. They'd say, hey, job well done. Got you through seven. He's out here looking to finish the deal, at least pitch deeper into the game. And he jumps ahead of Brett Gardner, 0-2. He's at the 100 pitch mark. Gardner wouldn't fish a ball and two strikes. The Darrens are up in the Texas bullpen. The left hander, Darren Oliver, the right hander, Darren O'Day. Or as Darren O'Day said yesterday, he said, well, you know, there's the good looking Darren and the homely Darren. <laughs> Which Darren Oliver did not appreciate. And look at that hustle play by Brett Gardner. So he is on to lead off the eighth in a 5-1 game. Top of the order now for the Yankees and Derek Jeter. He's 0 for 3. He's reached safely in 19 straight postseason games. Well, coming into this game today, Jeter well over 400 against left-handed pitching in his postseason career. 22 double plays he hit into though this season. And he hit into one in the fifth to end the inning. Wilson looks at Gardner and now comes to Jeter. That ball well hit. Fair ball into the corner and left. Gardner is around third as the ball gets away from Murphy. And the Yankees are down five to two. On the grounder to first in the head first slide. And then. Derek Jeter with the run scoring double to make it a five to two game as Darren Oliver's come on in relief. Well, Oliver's going to continue to pitch against. They want Swisher and Teixeira to hit from the right side. He is going to face the two switch hitters. And the one thing you get from the Yankees is just an outstanding job again by the bottom of their lineup, able to get on, hustle plays, to set up the beginning for the middle of the order hitters. So Jeter at second after the run scoring double. Nick Swisher at the plate. And the veteran Darren Oliver. 40 years old. On in relief of C.J. Wilson. And at this point of the game you'll trade outs for that run. What you start doing is you start thinking a little negatively. Oh, two run homer, that brings them within one run. You start thinking of all the things that can happen. So when you get outs, it starts making you feel a little bit better because they just want to get to the ninth inning with the lead. Ran it inside and missed. A ball and a strike. Oliver turned 40 earlier this month. In fact, it was October 6th. When he pitched in game one of the ALDS against Tampa Bay on his birthday. He's taken too long for Swisher. Back when these teams met in 1996, Darren Oliver was in the starting rotation. Started game three of that series against the Yankees. Back to the 1997 ALDS, and they trailed six to one and one eight to six. They were down five nothing in this one. Yeah. 
what had been a carefree atmosphere in this ballpark has turned suddenly tense. Good discipline at the plate by Swisher. Those are two pretty tough pitches to lay off of. If you're aggressive and you want to make something happen, that's what Darren Oliver was trying to feed off of the aggressiveness of the hitter, and he didn't bite. The 3 1 caught the corner, count full. Well, hitters count, but good pitch there by Oliver. Just caught the corner. Oliver's strength now at 40 years old is that he can throw any pitch at any time in the count. The curveball there, 3 2. He turned the ball over, has a good cutter. Runners at first and second with nobody out. Saw Dave Anderson moving Michael Young closer to the line at third base. Takes a strike 0 and 1. Teixeira came up huge in game one of the ALDS against Minnesota. A little hanging slider here from Jesse Crane, the right hander, extended that lead for the Yankees in that game. With Darren Oliver here, you just got to trust and make believe you're going to get a ground ball. Right now, get a ground ball, turn two, reset the momentum to your team's favor. Almost nipped him inside. Two balls and a strike. Season game in your ballpark. Not only do the fans get tense, the players get tense. CJ Wilson can barely stand to watch. Full count. a comfortable five to nothing lead for the Rangers now it's five to two and with nobody out on the eighth the bases are loaded what a spot to come in for Darren O'Day well another great pickup for the Texas Rangers from the waiver wire Darren O'Day this side side armor has been outstanding in his 72 games of work during the regular season he is in to get a ground ball This is where you've got to focus on every positive thought you can have right now coming in saying OK. I don't have to keep him from scoring. I just got to keep that guy from first from scoring. I've got to get out and this is the only guy that matters right now for Darren O'Day pop up ground out sack fly. You don't care. Jeter Swisher and to share the runners. Rodriguez is 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. That ball hit like a bullet past Michael Young. That'll score Jeter. Here comes Swisher. It's a one-run game. Yeah, and he's in here to do one thing and one thing only. Get Cano out. He's a left-handed specialist. 
rare you see two pitchers come in that throw from opposite sides sidearm. But well, that's Ron, what we've seen today. Ron Washington has added two left handers to his pitching staff who were not on the roster for the first round in Clay Rapata and Michael Kirkman for him to get as many lefties in there against this New York lineup and specifically as he told us before the game for situations like this to get Robinson Cano out. Cano bats with runners at first and second and nobody out. He homered his last time for the first New York run. The tying run is at second. Rodriguez at first after his two run single. Right back up the middle. This is going to tie the game. Teixeira scores. Rodriguez to third. It's 5-5. Five, five. Well, the left-hander Derek Holland on now to face the right-hand hitting Marcus Timms. This place is in a state of shock. Go ahead, run at third. Well, Holland's thrown a pitch, and he's still in there. Ran it inside and missed. A ball and a strike. Tim's is one out of three. Singled in the fourth. Yankees were scoreless through six. Cano homered in the seventh, a solo. Four runs here in the eighth to tie it. Still nobody out. Well, if you're the Yankees with all this momentum you got going, Tim's really needs to put the ball in play. Keep it going anywhere but third base. I know they're playing halfway in the infield. A Rod doesn't run particularly well. But there's some indecision whether or not they'll turn two or try to come home in a 5 5 tie. Foul pass first. A-Rod is getting a very aggressive lead at third base with no outs knowing that the contact he is coming home to force a play or see if the Rangers will turn to. Ron you got to think you got to try to throw something at his feet down in the dirt see if he can get a strikeout. He did just that. And nice play by Matt Trainer. That's the risk when you try to bounce one. Ron Washington had said when discussing his choice of trainer to start tonight, he likes the way he handles the ball in the dirt. And it's very quick, very agile to keep that ball in front of him. Shattered his bat, and the Yankees have the lead. Timsic, a guy who did spend some time in Texas, traded for Ruben Sierra back in 2003. Haunts his old team. And here's Posada. Still nobody out. And it all started with that hustle play by Brett Gardner the number nine hitter diving headlong into first on a grounder to first well the great slide the hustle play to first base just beating the foot of C.J. Wilson at first base and then after that really the two walks by Darren Oliver who came into the game really have propelled this inning.
What's amazing about the postseason, as we've said over and over again, stuff like that is a rally. I mean, it's amazing how many times you think, okay, no big deal, guy on first, then a hit, all right, no big deal, and the hits have not stopped. Now it's a huge deal. Three balls and a strike. Like Yankees baseball, this offense kind of wears you out after a while. He scored four or more runs 52 times this season. That's number one in the majors. Posada can look for his. Ahead in the count, 3 1 with two on and nobody out. Posada the eighth Yankee to bat in the inning. Five have scored. Fly ball right field. Drifting back goes Cruz at the wall makes the play. Cano will tag and move to third. Well, tough situation for the Rangers. You, you, you really can't turn two on Granderson unless he hits a one hopper to the middle of the infield. You're looking for a strikeout. If you can get it from your pitcher. Granderson cut right through it. 0 and 1. Well Texas must feel like they have enough firepower late in the game. I don't know how you can think that with Rivera looming in the pen. Think that with Granderson up you might want to pull all your infielders in. Try to keep this at a one run deficit. Missed with the 0 1. Rounded into double plays only three times in the regular season. And once in the Minnesota series. Curtis Granderson. No one one. Well, that pitch right there, if he can keep it over the middle of the plate, make it look like a strike. But the way that that breaks, that's how he's going to get the strikeout. You can either go up with a fastball or go right back with that scene if he can get him to bite on that pitch. Awfully sharp breaking ball. Huge spot for 24 year old Derek Holland. Pitcher of the inning for the Rangers. Well, the intensity is just raised, but this is a pretty good call by Jerry Davis. The problem was that Jerry Davis raised up a bit like he was going to call it a third strike and then decided not to. 3 2. He got him. Huge strikeout for Derek Holland for the second out here in the eighth. And he scored the first of five Yankee runs in this inning. He bats with runners on the corners. You might think it's not a great play, but Gardner's not averse to bunting with two strikes for a hit. Michael Young at the edge of the grass at third.
Holland painted the corner. And it's one and one. The Texas lead gone here in the eighth. Derek Holland trying to keep the deficit one. That guy was brilliant through seven. C.J. Wilson has watched the bullpen implode. To short. Andrews got a hurry. Got him by a half a step. But did the New York Yankees do some damage in the eighth inning? I'll say. Five-run score. They lead it 6-5.